We are now at the stage of the Russia investigation story when the leaks of weeks ago are the proven facts of today. Paul Manafort made his second appearance in federal court today, probably the second of many appearances in federal court. He was there to request a loosening of the conditions of his bail, which the judge refused to do. In making the case about why Paul Manafort can be trusted not to flee the country, Manafort's lawyer told the judge that Paul Manafort Fort was warned by the special prosecutor in August to expect to be indicted. Now, remember when that was a leak, an unsourced leak that could easily have come from the federal investigators or even more likely the defense lawyers representing Manafort or others in this case? It was just a leak that Manafort had been told that he was going to be indicted, proven a fact today. Today, that leak of three months ago is a fact, a fact presented in open court. We have another new and important fact today, and many more will surely follow. Jeff Sessions was not telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth when he testified under oath to the Senate Judiciary Committee about the Trump campaign's contacts with Russians and Jeff Sessions' contacts with Russians. When you're testifying under oath, the tripwires are everywhere, perjury tripwires. And the only real way to be absolutely certain that you will not trip into perjury is to tell the truth, the whole truth, and absolutely nothing but the truth. And you can say things under oath that turn out not to be accurate and are also not perjury because it's not testimony about an important fact or a material fact or it's a minor error or maybe it was your best memory at the time and it's now turned out not to be true, an understandable mistake. If not a completely honest mistake, understandable mistake, that stuff's not perjury. Senator Al Franken put the first tripwire in front of Jeff Sessions during his confirmation hearing in January when he asked him about contacts with Russians, and Jeff Sessions said this. If there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign communicated with the Russian government in the course of this campaign, what will you do? Senator Franken, I'm not aware of um, any of those activities. I'm not aware of any of those activities, anyone communicating with the Russian government. Two months after that answer, Jeff Sessions wrote a letter to the Judiciary Committee changing his answer to include meetings that he himself had with the Russian ambassador, who is, of course, the Russian government. In reaction to that, in March, Senator Al Franken on this program said that it appeared that Jeff Sessions committed perjury. And the special prosecutor's court filings accompanying the revelation of the guilty plea in George Papadopoulos' case on Monday, the special prosecutor specifies that Papadopoulos, who was a foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign, discussed making contacts with Russians in a meeting where Jeff Sessions reportedly discussed that idea and objected to that idea strenuously. Here is a picture of that meeting that included Jeff Sessions, George Papadopoulos, and candidate Trump, who would have heard what George, George Papadopoulos had to say. Then Senator Jeff Sessions and then candidate Donald Trump participated in a discussion in that photograph. They were participating in a discussion about contacts with Russians involving the campaign. And Jeff Sessions, when asked about that, has never admitted that in his Senate testimony. Did you ever overhear a conversation between you and anybody on the campaign who talked about meeting with the Russians? I have n not uh, seen anything that would indicate um, a collusion uh, with Russians uh, to impact the campaign. Notice he did not answer the question that he was asked. He was not asked if he saw a collusion with Russians during the campaign. He was simply asked, did you hear, overhear, any, any conversation about meeting with Russians during the campaign? Simple as that. Here's what Senator Franken had to say about the latest revelations about Jeff, the Jeff Sessions story today. He has contradicted himself so many times uh, in the last, since January, that it, it really is hard to uh, believe that he's been telling the truth at any one, at any one point. 
Now let's consider what President Trump said about his campaign's contacts with Russians in February of this year. Can you say whether you are aware that anyone who advised your campaign had contacts with Russia during the course of the election? Well, I told you, General Flynn obviously was dealing, so that's one person, but he was dealing as he should have been. During the election? No, no nobody that I know of. And so, George Papadopoulos appears to be on a collision course with the president about what the president heard him say and heard his campaign therefore discuss in that room in that photograph that we just saw about contacts with Russians on March 31st, 2016. J.D. Gordon, a campaign advisor who attended that meeting, told the New York Times, Papadopoulos went into the pitch right away. He said he had a friend in London, the Russian ambassador, who could help set up a meeting with Putin. Mr. Trump listened with interest. Mr. Sessions vehemently opposed the idea, Mr. Gordon recalled, and he said that no one should talk about it because it might leak. Tonight, NBC News has confirmed that former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page testified to the House Intelligence Committee today that in June 2016, Page informed Jeff Sessions that he was taking a trip to Russia, and that trip was reportedly unrelated to the campaign. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.